And then secondly, not only does fear keep us in the boat, but the love of comfort stops us. The love of comfort. The desire to have a comfortable life. How many of you realize that sometimes a comfortable life can also be a boring life? Hello? God is calling us out of our comfort zone. There are a lot of people who will stand before Christ at the judgment seat and they're going to suffer loss. Uh, They're not going to lose their salvation. No, no, no. But they're going to suffer loss because they chose to live a comfortable life instead of a faith-filled life. Am I right? God wanted them to be water walkers. God wanted them to do great things, but they chose comfort. Now, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands for this question this morning. But I wonder today, do we have any couch potatoes here? Who knows what a couch potato is? A couch potato are people who are content to sit at home on the couch and and watch television rather than experience life for themselves. They watch TV. They are happy to be on the couch most of the day. They're content to watch others experience the beauty of life. Instead of going into the backyard, planting their own garden, they watch shows about gardening. Are you with me? Instead of improving their own home, they watch HGTV and watch somebody else's home get improved. Instead of going into the kitchen and making a phenomenal dinner, they get a TV dinner out of the refrigerator and they warm it up in the microwave and they watch one of those gourmet cooking shows. Instead of having friends, they watch a television show called Friends. Instead of playing sports, they only watch sports. Instead of going and having a real vacation, they watch the travel channel, okay? Instead of having a real romantic life, they turn to the Hallmark channel. I don't know if I'm stepping on any toes or not. Don't be a couch potato because you're going to miss life. Now, in the church, we don't have couch potatoes, but we have what I want to say are boat potatoes, right? Boat potatoes. Boat potatoes are those who are too addicted to comfort to actually extend themselves in service and in love and in caring for others. They're content to watch others walk on the water. They're content to to watch others do ministry and serve and and, and worship and do all of those kind of things. Uh, How many of you realize that the 11 disciples that were in the boat, they were boat potatoes, right? I'm not saying they didn't love Jesus. They were willing to follow Jesus, but they wanted him to comfort them. Apparently walking on water didn't interest them. They preferred the comfort of the boat. John 15 and 16 tells us that we're not called to be boat potatoes, but rather fruit bearers. Amen? The scripture says this, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should do what? Go forth and bear fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Come on, I'm just here today to tell you that God has a call for each and every one of us. God has something that he wants us to do, and I can assure you it's not sitting there with the channel clicker like this. Come on, it's getting out there and touching the hearts and the lives of people. It's doing something for the king and the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I love this quote that says, a ship in the harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. Come on. We are destined to get out on the storms of life. Amen. That's where the adventure is. The question is, do we dare do it? Now, I've never linked this story with this verse ever before this week. But have you ever thought that Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, upon this rock I build my church. He didn't tell that to Andrew or Bartholomew or any of the other 11. He told that to the water walkers. Uh, Come on. He said, you know why? Because God knows one thing, that to advance the kingdom of God, you got to have faith. you got to have faith. you got to have faith. you got to believe the Lord. you got to get out. Out of the boat, come on. You gotta trust God. You gotta believe Him. Amen. Amen. And he knew, Peter knew what it was to hear the voice of Jesus saying, Come. Amen. Is there anybody else that if the Lord, what the Lord tells you to do, you're gonna do? Amen. 
You know, because you've learned that he can be trusted. And so the quest, second question is this. What is God inviting us to do? What does get out of the boat mean to you? Obviously, if we needed to actually walk on water one day, maybe that would actually happen. I don't know. But I'll tell you, I think it's kind of a metaphor for life. Followers of Jesus have always had to take some risk to step into the unknown. We take risks not for the thrill or the spotlight, but we take risks in order to be faithful. And I believe this, that, that at every single person here today needs a place of service. Amen. Every one of you are ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I just love going to pastor's meetings. They'll say to me, hey, Brother Bob, how, how many ministers you got over there? Oh, I don't know, about 115, 118. What? Man, your church has really grown. You got that many ministers on staff? I'm like, no, they're not on staff, but every single one of them is a minister. Hello, come on. How many of you believe that God has something for you? Amen. This message is not for preachers. This message is for people, ordinary people, who say, I'm going to, let me get... Hold on. Catch your breath, Bob. Whew. I'm getting too excited. Stepping out of the boat might simply mean walking across the room to the lunch counter to sit by somebody at your work, amen, and having the courage to open up your Bible and start reading it, amen. It might mean talking to the person at Walmart about Christ, all right. It might mean meeting somebody and, and just sharing your faith with them. But let me tell you something, you've got to get out of the boat, amen. Getting out of the boat might mean making a meal to bring to someone who is sick or having health problems and then praying for them as you're there. For some, it might mean further involvement in ministry. It may mean standing firm in your confession of healing. It may mean going to everyone in your neighborhood or everyone in your apartment complex and knocking on the door and inviting them to a Bible study at your home that you're planning to host. Come on. How many of you think that would be stepping out in faith? You say, well, I'd like to see the miraculous. If you want to see the miraculous, you've got to put your faith in action. Hello. For some, it might mean fasting two or three days for family members to be saved. For some, it might mean joining the choir. Hello. Oh, let's put a commercial in there. All right. It may mean starting to pray again. It might mean even coming to a safe place like Celebrate Recovery where you can open up the inner recesses of your life and say, you know what? This is what happened to me. This is what I'm going through. This is what I'm struggling with and finding hope and for healing. But what I'm saying today, come on church, is we got to get out of the boat. Here's a huge question. What stirs your heart? You know, when you acknowledge a need, it could very well mean that God is calling you to meet that need. Perhaps your concern is for children or the elderly or those in poverty or those who you might be drawn to youth or injustice or those in prison or, or those who are sick or in crisis or the addicted or the homeless or the broken. And you might be saying, I'd like to do something, but I'm just not able. I, I just don't feel qualified. I haven't had enough education. I, I can't. Let me tell you something. You are a candidate to be a water walker. Hello? All you've got to do is get out of the boat and believe that God's great powerful hand is going to be underneath you and sustaining you. Amen. This week I came upon an article about a lady that I really enjoy reading about her. There she is right up there. She was born in 1908. She's passed away now. Her name is Osceola McCarty. That's my sister up there, by the way. I read her story and I cried. I did. In 1908, her mother was raped, and she came as a result of that situation. She was raised by her grandmother and her aunt, and uh, she had a dream for young people and their education. It's probably because growing up in Hattiesville, Mississippi, was difficult. She had that passion because she didn't have an opportunity to get an education 
as a child. She had to quit sixth grade because she had to take care of a sick relative. And she spent her entire life washing clothes and doing ironing for families of the town. Caring for other people's dirty clothes, she was paid in change and in small bills. She lived very simply in a small house. She never had a car. She walked to the church and she walked to the store and she saved what she could of her earnings. When she was in her 80s, she was finally ready to retire. I like that. And so the bank helped her set up a trust fund for herself, and she made provision for her church and her few relatives. And in 1994, this little lady who really had so little opportunity in life, she gave the amazing sum of $150,000 to the University of Southern Mississippi for scholarships for needy students. She had never even been on that campus. Never even been there recognizing that at one time that school had not been integrated, but now it was, she said, listen, I just have to do something. She was actually given the President's Citizens Medal and was honored by the United Nations. I looked for how much that fund had given. I could only come up with 2014 statistics, but the market value of the Osceola McCarty Endowed Scholarship Fund in 2014 was $745,000, 44 students. Students have received McCarty scholarships with more than $370,000 awarded since the scholarship's inception. That's one of the most amazing stories I've ever read. A little lady who was a believer in Jesus who walked to church. By the way, she also was a tither. Hello. She also gave her first tenth to the Lord. As she, she served the Lord all of those years and God enabled her to make such a big splash, a big impression. I just declare that that's the kind of woman I admire. Amen. She got out of the boat. Amen. She's a modern day walkie, wa water walker. Years ago I heard Tommy Barnett, one of my favorite preachers, preach and he was preaching uh, about miracles. How many believe the Lord's a miracle worker? Amen. He was telling about all the different miracles he had heard and seen in his life and interestingly enough he put a little twist on that message and he said listen he said why don't you become somebody else's miracle? Boy that puts it in a whole different perspective doesn't it? Why don't you become somebody else's miracle? That stuck with me across quite a few years. Amen. And, 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 and I remember a, a, a friend of mine named David Porter. He was a missionary colleague that I used to travel with. And I've spent many, many, many hours with him. And I didn't know this about him. But when he was a young pastor, he began, uh, you know, it was in the days of bus ministry. And so he would go around and he would knock on doors. And he began to uh, bring a little boy and his sister to church. They were like on the other side of, tra of the town. They were on the other side of the tracks. They were a very poor family. This little boy was kind of trouble all the time. A difficult young man. Do you know what his name is today? He's one of my Facebook friends. His name is Kevin Ward. Kevin Ward. Alright, he's a pastor friend of mine. And now today he and his wife are pastoring a, a very successful ministry. Amen. I'll tell you something. I say that David Porter was the miracle in Kevin Ward's life. Come on. Amen. That's what we need. I, I, I declare that David Porter he is the modern day water walker hello we need that today I've got a nephew by the name of Brent Silky actually he's not my nephew he's married to my, my, my niece uh, but anyway his name is Brent and he has picked up this desire to, to do everything he can for human trafficking Amen. He runs the big old long 30 mile marathons and marathons and he's raising money. He's raised thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to help people in those kind of dire situations. I just declare that he's a modern day modern wa water walker today. I just declare that God is looking for some of us to step out in faith and say, what can I do for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? I'll tell you, I, I love Celebrate Recovery. We meet every Friday night. We are a close-knit family. I've got my brothers in Celebrate Recovery. Amen. Amen. I love those guys. And we journey together. But I, you know something? God needs more of the family of God to be part of that ministry.
God needs more people to stop watching TV on Friday night and come out and be a part of that ministry and help us touch the hearts and lives of this community. Come on. We get people all the time that are brand new walking in the door. They, they come in the door with hurts and hang-ups and habits. They're looking for friendship. They're looking for help. They're looking for someone to say, I care. Come on. How many of you believe that we can make an impact? Come on. I believe that with all of my heart. Amen. And on and on I could go and preach.